Hello everybody, welcome back to The Contrarian. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Logan. I really love to talk about overall success, investing, and most of all, going against the crowd. In order to outperform the market, you fundamentally have to question the market's thinking at times, and at times take very unpopular stances on different stocks or commodities or whatever. So uh, because of that, I really like talking about just the nature of contrarian investing and especially talking about other contrarian investors out there who have been very successful over time. And one of these people who I frequently talk about is Dr. Michael Burry. Even though he's had a very relatively short uh, career, just starting his hedge fund in roughly the year 2000, he has well outperformed you know, any measurement of the market in that time frame in the last 21 years. And because of that, he's been a regular a subject who I talk about really analyzing his strategies and talking about current positions he has or current thoughts or tweets that he's put out. With all of that being said, there is one fundamental weakness that I've seen uh, crop up time and time again for Dr. Michael Burry. And I say this with a lot of respect because this is every contrarian's weakness out there. Every investor, every person, it doesn't even have to be in the world of investing, but every person who takes a stance against the crowd uh, fundamentally will make this mistake at some point in time, and I've definitely made this mistake several times, Dr. Burry has made this mistake many times as well, and that is being early. And it's oftentimes said in the field of investing that being early is as good as being wrong. And that's definitely true with, say, the derivatives market. If you're early with that, you might as well be completely wrong because you're going to miss out on the action that you thought would happen, and it ends up happening much later than you thought it would. So I'll just talk about Michael Burry's record of being early on things, and while it's not as bad as being late, being early is also a very discouraging mistake that you can make at times. So first of all, he has been early, as is described in the book The Big Short by Michael Lewis. He was early oftentimes with the investments he would make, and also the short positions he took on companies around the dot-com bubble. You know, it was oftentimes you know, six months to a year, he would get in early and have to wait around quite a while for things to act as they should. Um, and that's just getting started. From there, he went on to uh, short the housing market. This is obviously what he is most famous for, as he is featured in the big short, uh, the movie, as well as the book. But uh, he was two years early on this. He actually started looking into shorting uh, subprime mortgage-backed securities in 2005. And, you know, according to Michael Burry himself, in 2006, these, uh, you know, the filings that were released regarding these mortgage-backed securities actually began to show that they would eventually collapse. So in 2006, he did end up taking this position. However, it did take a good two years past the start of him taking this position for it to play out as expected. And even though this did end up earning him hundreds of millions of dollars and his investors a total of several billion dollars, it did end up costing him a lot in terms of reputation. His clients became very angry with him, and overall, it was just a very difficult for an experience for him to go through, I'm sure. Um, so this kind of does show how being early can be a very serious mistake to make. And also, you know, we can talk more recently than that with GameStop. He was very early. He wrote several letters to GameStop's board, um, just urging them to take actions that they basically did end up taking eventually. And he did uh, purchase shares in GameStop stock, and he held those shares roughly two years before they actually ended going up significantly. So, um, you know, it, it does go to show that uh, Michael Burry has been very early on past uh, investments he's made. Actually, one very recent uh, bet that he made of interest rates rising, if you recall my you know video I made a few months ago about his uh, Q1 13F filing, it did show that he had bought... Uh, you know, different derivatives essentially betting that interest rates on, you know, the 10-year bond would go up. And uh, this has, you know, that did end up happening in the first quarter of this year. However, in the second quarter, uh, that has reversed and now rates are back. You know, they've corrected lower as I did allude to back in that video. I That was kind of the one main difference I had with Michael Burry is I did think that rates would not continue to go up past, you know, the 1.75 on the 10-year where they did end up peaking. I did think that they would end up correcting back lower. So all of this being said, Michael Burry still has one of the best track records out there over the last 20 years. He's definitely outperformed other more seasoned, older investors such as Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger. I definitely think that Michael Burry 
kind of has a better mindset of how to go about investing, at least in this current market environment, than, say, uh, Warren Buffett. Um, but all that being said, I do now want to talk about how you can avoid making this mistake, and also kind of what I've learned are useful ways to avoid falling into this mentality of just seeing something that's very obvious, that's very overvalued or very undervalued, or a stock that you think everybody is ignoring. These are just helpful tips that I've found that uh, can help you make avoid making this mistake of being too early into something. And the first one has to do with not falling into the mentality of this is the you know last opportunity to get into something before it rockets off. And oftentimes this is you know surrounding things that have seen significant upside just recently. You know, right now we're seeing this kind of surrounding the uh, oil or oil stocks. They've had a significant run in the last, you know, five months or so. Um, but you just need to avoid that mentality. You cannot listen to people who just say that, you know, oh, this is the last opportunity you can buy into gold or silver or Bitcoin or oil or whatever. Um, you know, that fundamentally that is not true. Markets do not move in a straight line. That is a very important rule you need to keep in mind that I've had to learn the hard way at times is that markets do not move in a straight line. They, you know, they have different uh, periods of sharp legs where they either move up or down and then they have periods of consolidation where, you know, in between those different legs. So even though something may have moved uh, up or down dramatically recently, it does not mean that, that is going to continue uh, moving in that direction. And if anything, it could point to uh, this, you know, particular price movement being due for a consolidation, which usually means correcting back towards where it came from, uh, which oftentimes spooks investors and you know makes all of this noise go away. And at that time, it would actually be a very good opportunity to consider getting into what you're thinking about, just not when there's as much uh, noise around it. So rule number one I can give you is just keep in mind that markets do not move in a straight line and there's pretty much always going to be another time you know to buy into something in the future it's never going to be the case of where you you know you have this last opportunity to get into something now rule number two i can give you is just a common you know investing tip out there and that is that the market can often times stay irrational much longer than the majority of investors think that it can and quite recently we've seen this with the whole you know market crash 2021 um, narrative that's been pushed out there for you know the past year or more you know the market is going to crash in this year and we have seen many many people be uh, proven wrong in their statements and their time frames about that uh, such as Harry Dent saying that it's gonna crash you know at any point in time now basically he's been proven wrong many times about that um, so just keep in mind that the market with whatever you're talking about whether it's uh, going bullish on something going bearish on something buying a particular stock um, it's that the market will stay irrational longer than you can remain solvent. That's a famous saying out there, but you just need to keep in mind that just because you see something obvious out there does not mean that the majority of other investors see that and are actually acting on that as well. So you just need to keep in mind that the market can remain irrational much longer than you could ever think in the past. You know, Michael Burry bought into the, uh, the short position that he had in the subprime mortgage back securities, he bought into those two years before it ended up actually crashing and you know causing the whole financial crisis. So you need to keep in mind that the market can remain irrational much longer than you might think so. So all of this being said, I still do think Michael Burry is one of the greatest investors out there, at least in this current point in time. Um, he has one of the best track records out there. This video is merely just highlighting one of the uh, ways that I've observed, you know, that he's been very early on things and just how that can, in fact, be a big mistake. But, um, you know, it isn't always a large mistake. It's just something that no one can get perfectly. That's an important thing to emphasize as well. You can never be perfect in timing, but you can always uh, at least, you know, be a better, uh, have better perception about when to get into something uh, and when to get out of something. So all that being said, none of this is to be taken as financial advice. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, just consider subscribing and I hope to see you again.